Hey Dennis, I'm wondering how fast Baker Air Guns can really get me that award-winning gun from EBR, the Brocock Bantam Sniper HR. I want it in 177. You say you can get it to me today? It's in stock? Just do what? All right. Well, let's give it a shot. Here we go. One, two, three. <laughs> Holy cow! The Brocock Bantam Sniper HR, and we're going to review it right now on the Airgun Advisor. Well, welcome back, fellow air gunners, and I want to introduce you to my new set and thank everybody out there who has already hit that subscribe button. I'm up to 531 subscribers as of the making of this video, and I want to pre I really appreciate all of your support. Uh, if you haven't had a chance to do that, make sure you hit that subscribe button at some point, either at the end of the video or whenever you decide to click off. But hey, today we're going to be taking a look at the Brocock Sniper HR. This one is in 177, uh, provided me by Dennis Baker over at Baker Air Guns for testing. So thank you guys out there for helping the channel out. Um, we're going to take a look at it. We're going to describe it. Take a look at uh, a group that I, or the types of groups that I've been getting, the pellets that shoot best out of it, and describe some of the things that I've had to do with this rifle uh, in order to get it to the point uh, that it is currently. So, before I get started with where I am currently, let's just take a quick look at this rifle. It has a great synthetic stock and I say great and I'm not a huge fan of synthetic stocks because usually they sound hollow, they feel light, they just Let's be honest, they feel cheap. Uh, Brocock has done a nice job with this stock. It is solid. It, I mean, it doesn't have a hollow sound to it. It feels substantial in your hand, almost, almost as good as a wood stock might feel in your hands. Um, and you know, I understand why Brocock went with the synthetic stock. It is truly a gun that's meant to be taken out in the field and used on a daily basis for pesting or hunting and a synthetic plastic stock makes sense it's going to be able to be uh you know it's going to hold up to the weather it's going to hold up to different environments and that's what you want in something like this type of rifle so uh kudos to brokock for taking something that could have come out cheaply and making it seem or making it uh, a nice product also has the cheek riser on it as well and the adjustable butt pad so you can get everything squared away and situated to fit you just the way you want for your shooting purposes some other things to keep in mind with this rifle it does come with a 10 shot magazine as well as a single shot tray if you have seen some of my other videos i do enjoy a single shot tray much more than 10 shot magazine and so i was glad to see that but on the downside the single shot tray was a little bit wobbly in in there and over several weeks of use it did wear out and you could push it a little bit if you weren't careful about setting your pellet in the tray so uh, it might be something that you want to take a look at and see what an aftermarket tray might do not a deal breaker by any means but i do want you to make sure that you are aware of that uh, some of the other nice things you guys know i did review the mark one version of this rifle and this this second version here the sniper hr uh, has a much larger shroud on it which is great for deadening that sound uh, makes it very backyard friendly if your locale will allow you to shoot in your backyard don't necessarily need a moderator so when you buy this rifle i would highly suggest waiting uh, on a moderator see what it sounds like in your own hands see what you think of it before spending the extra couple hundred bucks on a moderator because i was really surprised with how quiet this was without one um, also you'll notice the two gauges on the side here so those two gauges are for um, measuring and, and keeping monitoring the pressure both in the cylinder up front here which is a regular brocock has but also telling you the pressure that's coming out of the huma regulator so that is great if you're out there shooting in the field or what have you know when you go off the regulator but it's also a plus whenever you are testing your rifle and trying to adjust the regulator to what you want or your specifications so when this um, rifle was shipped to me it was shooting about 15 foot bounds 
of energy, which is way too little for what I like to shoot. I like to shoot much closer to 20 foot pounds and I was able to adjust the regulator very easily and bring it up to just under 19 foot pounds. I believe it was 18.83 foot pounds, somewhere in that range. And to do so, you're gonna to wanna to take a look at the underbelly of your rifle here. And you're gonna notice there's the fill probe uh, right there and it comes with a nice cover. I don't have it on here now, but just below that you have a brass screw that you can see down in there and that's how you can adjust the regulator from outside of the air gun you don't have to disassemble your air gun in order to uh, adjust the regulator which is a feature that i really like and i'm glad to see that brocock did that um, now just to, for helping you at home see what i can see I'm, i went ahead and i undid the stock and i took the the one, the single bolt out, so you can kind of get a better idea of what's going on under here. And you can again see the fill uh, nipple there, as well as the screw for adjusting the regulator. And you're going to want to uh, turn it counterclockwise to increase the power, or turn it clockwise to decrease that power. So, a pretty easy, pretty simple thing to do. Uh, you're also going to want to degas the rifle uh, before adjusting the power. Uh, that way, you don't have any chance of injuring uh, yourself or uh, hurting the equipment like the regulator inside keeping it gassed while you adjust it is not a good method of doing so so keep that in mind there's also further adjustability i'm going to flip this around the back you can see right here where the bottom uh, silver uh, screw is that is the hammer spring tension and you can adjust that. Now to get the results I'm going to show you here in a little bit, I did not adjust this hammer spring tension at all. I left it where it was factory set uh, and, and it worked for me. So you, you may not have the same results if you per pick up this uh, Bantam sniper, but uh, for me, no adjustment was needed. And then once you get it to the maximum level that you want it to, it has one more method of adjusting that speed that's really easy to access, and that is the power knob or power adjustment here on the side. And again, just like the original Bantam, it has significant or has dentins on the uh, as you turn it that you can kind of feel the click in a positive click to which setting you have. Now, I left mine. Uh, at I got lucky where the regulator is set but if I wanted to take it inside and wanted to shoot uh, in the garage or the basement or a different space I could really crank that power level down I won't save air because all it's doing is restricting the transfer port in the rifle but I can take that power level down uh, a notch or two based on what I'm doing or if I'm hunting inside of a barn and don't want to make sure that the you know I want to make sure that I'm not punching holes through the side of the barn or the roof or anything I can take that power level down so I have those options um, which is great that Brocock left that functionality there and it's easy for the end user us to adjust it uh, I really uh, appreciate that uh, also Guys, as I was tuning this, I mentioned earlier, I, I, it was at 15 foot pounds now. I brought it up to about 18.84, just under 19 foot pound mark. And I really hit the sweet spot. And once I found that sweet spot and I did some accuracy testing, I brought it back home and I wanted to see, well, what can I, what kind of accuracy can I expect based on the numbers that my chronograph is showing me? And I got over 90 shots with this rifle on close to a full fill with very little deviation um, from shot to shot. So standard deviation, I had 5.1 uh, as a standard deviation. Also a spread of 26 foot pound, or excuse me, 26 uh, feet per second. Uh, as far as the speed goes. And I was shooting at an average of 889 feet per second with the 10.34 grain GSB pellets. Now, I did find those pellets were not the most accurate pellets, but I happened to have a lot of them. I wanted to see what kind of consistency I was going to get. So I, that's what I used in the chronograph. I did take this out shooting and at the range, and I measured from 25 uh, and out. And my groups from 25, 25 in were easily, uh, you know, quarter of an inch or less, pretty much a ragged hole. Anything that you would, you know, what you would expect from a rifle of this, uh, this price range and this quality. So 
it's taking that again and moving it out to 50, 50 yards is really what I'm interested in because I know from 25, 30 yards in or so, this thing should shoot superbly, but does it shoot at 50 yards? And I tested again the JSBs, H&N, RWS, Crossman pellets, and I found that the best pellets are, are JSB's new pellets. And this is, this is just a coincidence that it works in my Red Wolf and now it's working also in my Brocock Bantam Sniper HR. But the JSB Monster, or excuse me, Exact Monster Diablo pellets, the redesigned versions in 177, they have a larger skirt than the, than the previous version, shoot lights out. And when I say lights out, I mean, we're shooting less than half inch group center to center. And this five shot group could be covered with a dime. A dime. I mean, when was the last time? Have you guys actually looked to see how big a dime is? At 50 yards, that's what it's shooting. I could put dimes out there and hit those dimes. Um, I couldn't ask for anything more out of a rifle, really. You got the, the adjustability factor that is easy to do. You've got the handability factor, which is great in the size of this. Uh, it's not quite a bullpup, but um, semi-bullpup rifle. Uh, adjustability with the speed and the ease of handling. It has a Picatinny rail for the bipod, which really helped for me with that consistency. All in all, a great rifle for the money. Um, so I would recommend it if you can, if it's something that you're interested in looking at, try to obviously visit your local air gun distributor, air gun store. I know air guns of Arizona are the ones who bring this air rifle into the country, but they have a lot of other uh, other stores that carry it. You know, Baker Air Guns, for example, is one nearby that carries this rifle. And uh, they were kind enough to help help get it into my hands for testing purposes uh, and for me to share with you guys. So, um, but I definitely see this thing rocking it out in field target. It's going to be out there in the bench rest scene. Also, if, if you are a hunter or pester, it's right there too. And then, you know, if you just like to plank, Dude, this thing is going to put a, a grin on your face ear to ear with its accuracy. And uh, it's a great rifle just to have fun with. So, hey, you know, if anything, um, this is a fun rifle to shoot. And it may be one that I'm going to have to uh, see if I can't save up a little coin for and uh, add to my collection. So, hey, until next time, guys. Make your pellets fly straight and your trigger pull stay smooth. And we're going to see you right here on the Air Gun Advisor. Hey guys, I got some exciting stuff coming up. We're going to be hitting up some air gun shows. We're going to be going to some field target events. We're also going to be testing some air guns. So if you like this kind of content, you want to see more, let me know. Hit that subscribe button. Let me know you like what you see. So until next time, may your pellets fly straight and your trigger pull stay smooth. And we'll see you right here on the Airgun Advisor.